So I'm somewhat uh, sympathetic with the Zoomer generation um, because, well, there's that classic meme where the millennials are crying and the boomers are yelling at them. And then it's just that gal from Two and a Half Men pouring the 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 kid a drink and it says Gen X and Zoomers. So, uh, and you've, you welcome to adulthood. You're, you're freshly here <clears throat> and you may have heard a thing or two about housing and without going into a long and sordid detail, you know, everyone's kind of like, gee, I wish I could afford a house. I can't afford a house. Rent is so high. Where's my student loan bailout? Boo hoo hoo. The boomers were mean to me. I'm going to give you a little Gen X insider baseball. Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of insider baseball and help you guys afford housing because I wrote a book, a couple of finance books, and none of the millennials listened to it, and they just said I was an ist or an ism. So I don't know. Do you want to be like the millennials living at home at 38 and whining about a $1,700 a month uh, rent payment? <clears throat> or do you want to buy some housing? It's up to you. I'm just going to tell you this. Don't listen to the boomers. Don't listen to the millennials. Don't listen to your teachers. Just listen to me. So here's what's quickly happened. All right, so the baby boomers bought all the land. <laughs> that's, there you go. And that's it. There you go. And they're not dying. When they do, there'll be a flood of housing on the market. Uh, but more seriously, though, um, <clears throat> what ended up happening for, gosh, the past 25 years, interest rates, mortgage interest rates have been incredibly low which channeled multiple tens of trillions of dollars into the housing market and drove housing way above the rate of inflation. Very similar and akin to student loans because when you borrow money and flood a market, if you're allowed to borrow money to buy things, that means you just flood the market with that much more money. And that's that's very, two of the tuition and housing, both driven up by the same general economic phenomena, low interest rates and, and borrowing money. Um, so uh, everyone, my generation as well, yes, there are some millennials who got in during the housing crisis. If you had that two, three year little window where you could have afforded out, some of you made off like bandits. I know one couple in particular, they got like, oh, they got a house for 120,000. And not, I think they sold it for half a million. They, they just timed it beautifully. Good, good couple too. Good couple. On Lake Minnetonka, they're wholesome DJ. If you're mentioning uh, prior lake. Um, anyway, so uh, the interest rates drove up housing to the point that even with low interest rates, you couldn't afford the house payment anyway because prices went up so high. So yeah, great. You got a 2.5% interest rate, but your entry-level home in some places is half a million dollars. Now, <clears throat> making matters worse is we've had a fair amount of immigration to the country combined with not telling my generation, the millennials or your generation to get off your ass and become contractors or tradesmen because tradesmen are icky and gross and nasty and stupid. And you all had to do what? Go to college. Now, do college majors build houses? No, they do not. Do college majors build anything unless you're in STEM? No, not really. All you do is whine and cry and ask for socialism and bailouts, just like the bankers. <clears throat> And so we not only have more people coming into the country, we do not have enough people who can build the housing to house the people in the country. <clears throat> and while there was this brief shining moment that young people could afford a house after the financial crisis, they, the, they were building tons of housing back then. There was a glut. A, it was a gluttonous supply, a glut, a genuine glut of housing. Sometimes there's like two, not two years, one and a half, 1.2 years of housing, depending on what market you were in. <clears throat> well, that was 16 years ago. And that crash crippled and drove out a ton of carpenters and developers that would have otherwise built up the housing. And since we had to eat through all that housing, it was quite a long recession and recovery time that we were in. Our ability to produce the supply of housing that our ever-increasing population needs <clears throat> uh, did not materialize. And so we have a literal classic supply and demand problem. There is huge demand for housing, but there just is not the supply. Oh, they're building it. 
those tradesmen and carpenters that are out there, but there's just not enough of them because we all majored in journalism and diversity and inclusion and sociology. So now you're facing the worst of all housing markets. <clears throat> there is an actual economic shortage. In other words, prices are not coming down. Are coming down. There's a literal uh, uh, deficit of housing out there. But interest rates are going up. So even if you could afford that $450,000 starter home at 2.5%, the interest rate is now 7%. And you're in, it's it's not looking good for you. Now, this is a problem for anyone aspiring to get into housing because housing is, I would say, the most important component of your retirement planning and your finances. Not just because it's the largest single asset you'll own, but it also directly affects your cash flow, meaning instead of pissing away your money on rent for 30 years, you invest it in your house. And so then ideally you own your house by the time you're, 45, 50, or if you're a millennial, never. <laughs> you people never wanted the American dream. You wanted your socialism and your cats. Uh, you'd have that paid off. You'd have an asset that you could sell later on after the kids moved out, go buy yourself a nice condo down in Florida. And then you have to, you didn't have to pay a mortgage anymore. So I would say, uh, a home, a home is is probably the most important part of your finances in your retirement planning. Now, education and all that is also vitally important as well, but <clears throat> we're just talking housing. Now, many of you would like to own a home and not rent, right? And but you're facing this basically impossible housing market. And so I'm going to go through a couple things you guys can do to inevitably get yourself into housing and it's like, okay, you, you trade crypto bro on options. No, no, this is just, just some stuff to plant in your mind uh, for you to consider, right? The first thing is aside from avoiding stupid degrees, like go major in the right thing. That's a given, right? There is no real reason for you guys to go out when you're 18 years old, tied to even 25 and piss away the equivalent amount of half the purchasing power of a house on rent. If American parents were kind enough to let their children live at home until they're about 25 so that these kids do not have to pay $1,500 a month rent, that would be the number one thing we could do as a culture and a society to help you young kids get into housing. <laughs> All right. So I would try to avoid paying rent. Now, this doesn't mean you're going to sponge off your parents. All right. You're going to be going to college for engineering or accounting or some kind of remote job. You're going to be going to, to school for a trade or something. Maybe you could even build your own house, but you're going to be doing something worthwhile. However, even before you go to college, this is something I, I did the math on and you could follow the, the math if you'd like. What I would do is in conjunction, like maybe go to school part-time, but I would work two full-time jobs while you're living at home, at least for two years, if not four. <clears throat> because if you were to do that, earning the average wage, say $15 an hour, put in your time, put in your dues, you're living at home, all you're doing is working, eating, and sleeping. By the time your college-educated peers are graduating, they'll be $150,000 in debt and had you park that money in an average returning mutual fund you will be sitting on around $150,000 to $200,000, depending on what you're paid. Now, right off the bat, at the age of 22, <clears throat> you're better off than literally every other college graduate out there. Literally, even the STEM majors. And if you are able to get like a trade in there, or maybe a truck driver, something you can only go to, you don't have to go to school for for four years, but truck drivers, they make good money. Go to school for that for like five weeks. <clears throat> and, you know, just work and bank that money. You're you're almost guaranteed to get in a home because that's a huge down payment. Not to mention your mortgage is going to be a lot less, and therefore your mortgage payment is going to be a lot less. So that's the number one thing I'd recommend that you do. And I, if you want to show your parents this, I implore parents to consider this, but they got to work two jobs. And kids, it's going to be hell and it's going to suck. But you know what? The rest of your life is going to be a lot easier. <clears throat> all right. So there's there's that thing. Now. Maybe not all of you have that luxury. Maybe not all of you are in that position. Another thing you could consider doing, and this I tell a lot of people this, well, I don't have the money now to buy a house, 
but why don't you buy the land? And not only just buy the land, but if you can afford it, buy several acres of land. Because yes, you may not be able to afford the house now, or maybe not only in 10 years, but 10 years go by and you buy the land. Well, now you could parcel off the land to perhaps raise the funds to build your house. And we've talked about this. <clears throat> well, let, let me not get ahead of myself. Let me let me mention, I'll, I'll make that a separate thing. But you don't, you know, make sure you want to live there. Like if you know, oh, I love my family. I want to live in Des Moines, Iowa for the rest of my life. I don't know why you would, but let's say you do. You're in the luxurious position of knowing, well, I want to live here. Well, go scout around. Work up a little bit, maybe you have $50,000 and go buy some land. And as you work up and work up and work up, all the money, 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 all of a sudden you got enough money that you could probably build yourself a, a modest home and, and, and then help subsidize that building of the home by parceling off the land, selling it to raise the funds to build your house. And so that's another way you can get in uh, without having to worry about real estate inflation. <clears throat> the another thing you can do. I would recommend is remote work. If you could get into some form of remote work, you say, well, why remote work? Well, then that opens up the entire world to you. You don't have to, let's say your family lives in California because they were too stupid to move yet. For whatever reason, they're still there. <clears throat> you look at California housing prices like, wow, Democrats are really bad at making people wealthy. Look at how expensive everything is. And you simply can't afford a house in California. Well, if you're a programmer or an accountant or any other kind of uh, skilled individual has a skill you can do or job you could do online, now you could go and move to places that no one else is at, like Arkansas. Or, well, I wouldn't go to Ohio. They have local income taxes there. Tennessee or Texas, a lot of land out there. Or Arizona. And as long as you have the internet, you can work. And that's about the only gift your generation is going to get is that remote work is now possible. You're no longer anchored or tethered to this outdated baby boomer prison, essentially. Like, well, if I can't see you, how do I know you're working? No, you got to come downtown where all the adult Democrats poop in the streets and there's traffic and stabbings. That's okay. We got rid of guns, though. I, I know he stabbed the person, but, but that's all right. It wasn't a shooting. And you got to pay $3,500 a month for an apartment to be anywhere near driving distance to, to your job. And no, we're not going to pay you enough to live here. <clears throat> if you're an accountant, your CPA, you get to you're an enrolled agent, something. You could go work wherever you want and go to a place where the, the, the property and the housing is affordable. And that doesn't just include the United States. You can go whatever. Well, Mexico, you can't buy property. You got to be Mexican. Um, Panama. Croatia, all these, you could go anywhere you want as long as you're allowed to buy property overseas. So that's another way to get into, into housing. <clears throat> um, another thing to consider, if you're a younger person, you obviously don't know where you want to live for any lengthy period of time. The rule generally is you should know that you want to live there for at least seven years. And then usually you get a cost benefit analysis. Usually you come out ahead if you stay in your house for seven years. But if you don't know where you want to live, but you have this money that you're like, boy, I could, I'd really like to, to, you know, get into a house. I just don't won't know where I want to live, but I got all this money burning a hole. What you can do is invest what's called a real estate investment trust. And a real estate investment trust is just like a mutual fund uh, of properties. So mutual fund is where they have a bunch of stocks and bonds and you invest into all of them by investing into one mutual fund. A real estate investment trust has, you know, 50, 100, 200 different properties. Sometimes it's commercial, sometimes a mall, sometimes it's residential, sometimes it's farmland. And so that's a way for you to hedge against property inflation. Now, just so you know, the prices of real estate investment trusts go up and down, just like property prices. But the whole point is if you say, well, I, I don't know where I want to live just yet. <clears throat> but if you invest into a diversified real estate investment trust, that's spread across many different properties. The overall price of that is generally going to keep up with property prices. It could go down, but you say, oh no, my real estate investment trust went down. Well, yeah, but so did the purchasing price of the, the property you wanted to buy as well. So it is, is not to increase the value of your investment. So that'd be nice if that happened. It is to maintain your purchasing power. So when you're ready to buy a house, you have equivalent purchasing power to afford the property. 
And so for those of you who are kind of like you're in the middle, you're just starting out your career and you're, you're, you're on the upswing and you're, you know, I don't want to live in Chicago, but they pay me a lot. Oh, look, adult Democrat poop again. I better step over that. Don't stab me. <clears throat> and other fine metropolitan areas in the United States. Um, once you get out of that and say, yeah, I definitely don't want to live here long term. Oh, Montana, where they don't stab you. They, they just shoot you there. <laughs> Cause you, you stepped across their land. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you can, that's maybe a place for you to park your money over the long term as you build up a nest egg to put a down payment down on a house. <clears throat> and then finally, uh, let's talk about the house itself. You know, what kind of house do you really need? I'm not a big city guy, as you can tell. Uh, but if you're just a single guy or a gal, and you know you want to live in a town for a while, uh, a condo is a perfectly all right option. It helps you build up equity over time. But especially if you're then going to buy land somewhere <clears throat> and build on it late, later, you don't need the, the fanciest of fancies. Keep in mind, you just need a place to live. And if you're going from living at home, pretty much anything is an upgrade. So right off the bat, you could get a trailer. Now, I know there are reputations and stereotypes about people who are in trailers and they're correct because I lived in Wyoming and that's just a state full of trailers <clears throat> and meth <laughs> and people who like to shoot other people. Uh, but that doesn't mean you have to be one of them. You can have a well-kept and maintained trailer. You can have a nice grounds. And a trailer is a lot cheaper than a regular home. It's kind of a good intermediary step where you bought your land. Now you got your remote location job. Go watch the, the, the Rockford Files. Go watch that. I know it's a show, but look at that. And you got your land, you park your trailer out there, and maybe you live there two or three more years, saving a lot of money as you work whatever your remote job is. And then you got enough money that you could pay cash to build a nice little house. Fabricated homes, prefabricated homes. Um, these have come a long way in technology. If you want to take a look at it, look up a, a company called Wausau Homes. Uh, I'm not saying to buy from them. I'm just saying... They don't sell everywhere either, but just take a look <clears throat> and you look at their homes. You're like, that looks like a regular home. You're right. It does because prefab homes are not these crappy sheet metal trailers that they used to be. Uh, they've de developed the technology and more so the assembly process where you got these big assembling uh, facilities, warehouses, and they make the house into components. And maybe you've even seen these being driven down the interstate by, um, by uh, uh, semi trucks, <clears throat> like that looks like a third of a house. It is a third of a house, and they literally jigsaw it together, seal it up, and it's a. It looks like a home. I I know someone who has a prefabbed home. She is very wealthy. You would not know it's a prefabbed home. It's a very nice home. I would. I, in other, I don't even know. It almost behooves a a new name for these type of homes because when you say prefab, you think 1970s trailer when the, it just, it just is not is the case. And so you may want to look into prefabricated homes, which are a little bit cheap. Now you could go really spits. I think it's Devel. Oh man. I saw some nice prefab homes. <laughs> I was like, I want that. Oh, $800,000. I don't want that anymore. <laughs> no. Some good look. I, I forget the name. It's a luxury. Look up luxury prefab homes. And it, there's this company that makes them and like, woo, they're real nice looking. Uh, so that's another thing you could consider. And then I've mentioned this before, but if you're new or just searching, you know, how do I afford housing as a millennial? Look into the bachelor hut. <clears throat> this is not a thing you can look up necessarily. It's just an idea. It's a concept where most people are going to be forecasted to be single for quite a long time. Half people are forecasted. If you're a Zoomer generation, half of you are forecasted to never marry. And so that <clears throat> brings about not only important questions about family and what kind of lifestyle choices are you going to make, but your housing, if you're going to be single for the rest of your life, you're not going to have children. You're not going to, by the way, not have children. No, not that, not be married, like not, not even two people. So if you're going to be single or you're going to be single for a while, and most of you are, you don't need that much housing. All you need is like a room, a toilet and a kitchenette. My buddy lives in, in Phoenix, and that's what he's got. He's got a room with a, a little bathroom on the side there. And then the other half of the house is the living room and a kitchenette. That's all anyone really needs. It really. <clears throat> now, of course, he's in Arizona. 
and he doesn't have to worry about snow or hail damage so his car could just sit in the carport. So this probably wouldn't work in uh, Montana. You need some kind of uh, uh, garage for your property, but you could build a garage for cheap. But my point is, why not build only the amount of house that you need and thus you have a little bachelor hut? Uh, Bill Burr, he's a famous comedian. He was talking about how his dream house would be a three-car garage below and a mother-in-law apartment above. He ain't wrong. And what you could do with this bachelor hut, let's say you live at home, <clears throat> you work two jobs until you're 22, you got the money, you become a truck driver or a tradesman, all of a sudden you're making $100,000, you bought the land, uh, you found out, oh, I really, I, I'm ready to move out to this land. You lived out there on a trailer for a little bit. You saved up the money. Now you have the funds to buy a, the, the assembly materials. for. You build your bachelor hut. You don't have no mortgage. <clears throat> you got to pay property taxes and insurance. And then should the day come, if you bought three to four acres of land, you meet Mrs. Wright or Mr. Wright, and you want to form a family or get, at least get together. Now you're able to parcel off the rest of the land presumably you should by that time have enough money to go and then build a regular three bedroom, two bathroom home for a family. And you have the bachelor hut to escape your wife. I mean, to escape the children. I mean, to rent out and generate added rental income. And so that's, that's the best my economic eye could tell me uh, how for young people to get <clears throat> into real estate. I would strongly advise against you young people getting rental property, especially if you're in a major city. Um, it's looking like tenants' rights are outstripping landlord lord rights. So you're not, a lot of times you're not going to be able to collect your money. Uh, people are becoming less and less responsible to destroy the property because they think they have the right to you for you to pay for their housing. You may be able to if you're in a town where you have good buddies that you know you're all going to stay in that town for the next five to ten years. There's this sweet spot after college where no one's getting married just yet as a bunch of bachelors or bachelorettes, and you could buy a house that's got like five bedrooms and rent it out to all these guys. That I've seen that done, but that's a very short window of opportunity, so that's another one you could do. But hopefully these are some ideas. They'll give you an idea how to get into housing affordably, how it's not an impossible dream, <clears throat> how it's not for the rich or the elite. It, it's for, and maybe get you the perfect little little dream spot you always wanted. And that's about it. All right. Link down below is a link to my course, The Dad You Never Had, wherein I not only talk about housing, particularly for younger people, how to get into housing. I talk about everything, education, career, dating, sex, marriage retirement planning, everything your dad should have taught you but didn't, <clears throat> that is linked down below. And so if you thought this advice would help you, maybe there's some other bits of advice that you could benefit from, uh, certainly to compensate and earn way more than the cost of the class. So let's go through the super chats. Wholesome DJ after, Aftershock, five bucks. Dude, bro, just got my MBA from the Carlson, bro. Me and my wife, we are racking up debt to buy my sweet new McMansion in Prior Lake or Coro or. Cochran, bro, she needs it. Is Cochran become a fancy place now? I remember when it was nothing but townhomes. Yeah, Prairie Lake, that's um, that's not a bad neighborhood. That's a nice little area. Oh, my goodness. Look who came back. <clears throat> Donna has. She loves Ron Swire. Look, Ron, a white girl likes you. Look at you go, man. Oh, regular Latino James Bond already stealing our white women from us. How you doing, Donna? Where have you been? How's Australia? Depressed Panda, five bucks. Easy, get a CDL, Class A, and move to the Midwest. You're not wrong. <laughs> Here's another bit of free advice that'll save you more than the, the $140. dollars you are going to 149 and then plus tax. You're going to spend on that class link below. Um, don't major in dumb crap, okay? That's going to save you $100,000. The Dad You Never Had, available on teachable.com, link below. <clears throat> Donna Hannaford, five Australian dollars. Cappy the <laughs> the shunt. <laughs> Why, whatever do you mean, my fine Australian friend? Congratulations on the silver plastic YouTube parquet. Thank you very much. I went to apply for it and they said I didn't have a hundred thousand subscribers. I'm like, okay, I'm I just I'm done. I'm done with the dumb people today. I'm done. It's not that important to me. I see 100,000. You say, I don't. I, I, okay, fine. That's fine. 
Uh, Dave, uh, 128, five bucks. Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry backs the conversion of office towers to apartments. Well, like I said 10 years ago, because, you know, people want to live where the action is. He <clears throat> He's not wrong. And the, uh, normally he's wrong, but he's right on this one thing. Because where else are you going to get, I think I did the math, like is it 30,000 units? Where else are you going to get 30,000 units like that? Like those buildings are built already. They got the infrastructure. They got the plumbing. They got the utilities. All you got to do is go in there and knock out some walls. And, uh, you know, it's all interior uh, renovations that you have to do. And that would definitely lower housing costs, not only in Minneapolis, but any country or any city that does it. Of course, the question is, all right, what are you going to do in downtown Minneapolis? Are you gonna, here, here would be my question for Mayor, Mayor Fry. Are you going to keep the people safe? Or are you going to defund the police? Are, are adult Democrats going to be allowed to poop in the streets like they are in San Francisco? Because San Francisco, downtown, you, you all should go there. Just check it out. <clears throat> it's gutted. It's empty. It's done. And you could say, well, we should turn that into housing. Who's going to live there? You let homeless people and heroin addicts and people poop in the streets. No. But but he is right. That That's a an already existing asset that would do a lot to help uh, lower lower uh, housing costs. <clears throat> Bob, five bucks. Buying a land is worse than buying a house for a first-time buyer. You have to build a house but install lock wall whale. So lock wall for the water and the electricity. I You have to build a house. But well, yeah, you're going to have to get the, the utilities out there. Yes. You'd have to pick the right piece of property. I, I don't think buying a house. What I'm saying is you don't know where you want to live. I'm sorry. You don't have the money to afford a house at the time, but you know where you want to live. Then I say, well, go buy that land where you want to live and then put a house on it later. Yes, you're going to have to drill a well if the utilities aren't already ran out there. Um, <clears throat> but if you are, if you, hang on, you don't have the money, you know where you want to live, don't go build a house you can't afford. Get the land first and then buy the house separately. Wholesome DJ Aftershock, two bucks. See comment below, below since YouTube censored my super chat. Okay. The American left is, <laughs> I can't imagine why they did that, Wholesome. <clears throat> the American left is white woman is on, is the most vicious. Vi I do not agree with this. I do not agree with this uh, entity on the planet. You won't find a more committed communists anywhere in the world. Um, I, uh, they are not nice. I will grant you that generally speaking as a group, but we have to judge everyone individually. Uh, but I don't think they have a monopoly on all those things. Uh, as I'm sure some of our, uh, our other, uh, uh brethren here in the, in the community will attest to. Uh, Dave, 128, five bucks, but I need a three car garage so I can park my leased Lexus and Audi outside to flaunt them. Yes. Yes. Yet, um, uh, in addition to the dad you never had, also on my Teachable account, I offer a course on minimalism, but that is not open for enrollment. But you guys can can wait for that when it comes uh, when it comes up uh, for uh, enrollment again. Sam Whiskey, five bucks. Cappy Elon Musk lives in a Boxabill home next to his rockets, and it's only three hundred seventy five square feet. I heard that. I heard he went to um, he became a minimalist, uh, and I cannot advise that enough. Your life gets so much better. It's so much more peaceful and relaxing when you don't you don't need the money. Um, I there's a piece of me. I don't have that much stuff, but there's a piece of me like, man, what if I just had my hut in Croatia with a little fireplace? I know this girl in Tennessee who builds these little cabins, and the only thing it doesn't have a garage, so I'd, I'd have to have a garage. I need at least a two car garage because I need to have two pieces of junk cars in case one breaks down. But I was like, looking at how simple would life be if you just have that little fireplace in your little, your little sleeping, your Murphy bed there, a little kitchen and a shower, and that's it. Oh, <clears throat> before I forget, um, Home Depot and Lowe's, they have these prefab huts that you can convert into living quarters. It's like a prefabricated bachelor hut. I forgot to mention that. I apologize to everyone listening. 
you may want to look into that. And there's videos on how they go about uh, running utilities to it. Not the easiest thing, but I think the huts are like 20 grand. There you go. Of course, you know, the, the place you buy property may not allow you to build it there. So make sure you're not in an HOA or some, you know, major metropolitan area. Like, oh no, it has to look all the same way. Otherwise, here's what I'll, I'll, I'll pick on, on, on the white women. All the prestigious liberal white women in the suburbs won't like it because it doesn't look the same. Nestor Toledo, uh, 220 Canadian. Congrats on your 100,000. Thank you, Nestor. Drew, for two bucks, how about not waiting? Well, you're going to have to wait. <clears throat> what do you mean not waiting? You got the money? You don't have to wait. You don't have the money? You're going to have to wait. I don't change the laws of physics. Drew, two bucks. Do you think there will be a correction in housing? See, <clears throat> I didn't know this time around. And I paid attention to the month supply. And I talked to a mortgage broker buddy and my realtor. And they're kind of saying the same thing. Well, it, it is what it is, that there's just more people than there is housing. And once again, we created literally 100 million college graduates who are completely useless and talentless and aren't going to produce anything of value. And if just 10 million of them had been carpenters and contractors, we would have had the damn housing. <clears throat> Um, so I don't think there's necessarily going to, I mean, the correction is here. Some places have come down off their highs by like five to 8%. Maybe there are other markets I'm unaware of that came down more, but, um, no, it hasn't been a crash obviously like it was in 2006, 2007. <clears throat> so it's, I feel bad for the younger people, especially those who will listen to me and not just eh, listen to you, Boomer. I, I'm going to major in journalism and music therapy and you can't do it. Why can't I afford a house? I mean, those people I don't care about, but I'm going to hope, I'm going to hope the Zoomers, the younger ones, listen and say, oh man, my millennial brother who's 37 still lives at home. My dad can't bang my mom on the kitchen island anymore because he's still here. But I joined the military, got the GI Bill, and majored in computer engineering, and now I make $75,000 a year. <clears throat> but maybe they'd look and say, well, maybe I shouldn't major in journalism. I, I see what happened to my gen, gen, I'm sorry, my millennial brother. Sam Whiskey, five bucks. Cappy Zoomers can be a house can be a house sitting professionals. They can be, yeah. I mean, another bit of free advice, Zoomers, is every generation before you, from the boomers to your generation are just a bunch of lazy work avoidant Fs. Do you notice how, every, you know, like fast, what Domino's is paying $18 an hour? That didn't happen in my day adjusted for inflation. All you have to do is show up on time and be responsible. You can make good money. Uh, we got, hey there, it's Jesse, uh, 10 generous dollars. <clears throat> Opinion on manufactured homes. I have one, bought one due to a family emergency. I'm 25 and living it for three years. I'm an electrician, just starting to make decent money. Okay. Uh, do you like it? I, I, I've i seen them. I'm impressed with them, but I don't live in one. You do. I'm, I'm, I'd am uh, I'm kind of be interested about your opinion. <clears throat> Drew, two bucks. What happened to your rental property in Minnesota? Oh, dude, I got rid of that years ago. No, no. I got out of Minneapolis and I was in the WBL. And um, Minneapolis, I think, just put in rent controls. And no, no, I got out a long time ago. I moved out of Minnesota two years ago. I don't know. Maybe it was burnt down. I, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe the, the new owner has to provide uh, lodging for free. Uh, but no, I, I sold that a long time ago. Wholesome DJ Aftershock, two bucks. Computer science enrollees surpassed the amount of liberal arts majors. Good. Good. I We need the trades. That's what I would recommend. If I had a son now or a daughter, I'd say, you're going into the trades. Drew, two bucks. My dream is to own a two-bedroom, one-bath. That's it. Yeah, that's all you really need. I can understand having an extra room for an office, uh, especially if you're single. Um, but yeah, and the house I built with all the proceeds from Minnesota ain't that big either. I don't want to clean. I don't need no big-ass house. I have actually quite a modest home. <clears throat> All right, there you go. Uh, again, link below, The Dad You Never Had. It's available on Teachable, 149 bucks. I guarantee you, your parents never told you this stuff about housing, right? I bet your parents still have a mortgage and probably have two mortgages on it, and their cars are also leased 
or, or, or on a car loan. I bet they're telling you to go to college and follow your heart and the money will follow. Well, they're all wrong. And maybe you ought to take my course. All right, Drew again. Drew's being very kind with his $2. Do you think it's worth being a landlord? Not anymore. No. <clears throat> now, in fairness, I did have very good experiences. I had great tenants uh, for the most part. I didn't even have really bad tenants, just weird tenants, uh, proto-woke SJWs. Uh, but that's how I was able to afford my property in the WBL and inevitably build my house. That's why I said housing is so important. If you can get into it earlier, not too early, you want to make sure you want to live there. Why it's so critical to your finances. Um, but I would not, <clears throat> I would not be a landlord in today's America where the government could just declare a moratorium on rent. I know a guy who manages properties and it's a nightmare. He's had to go through with filing to get the federal government to give him the money. No, I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. They're going to view land. They're going to view lodging as a right. And if you're foolish enough to be a landlord, they just say, yeah, all that hard work and the down payment and all that. Yeah. Now you got to house those people over there. Uh, well, I don't care if they're kicking in the sheetrock too bad for you. It's too bad. All right. That's it. I'll see you guys later. Toodles.